Hello detectives, in today's video, we'll listen to a woman who said that Andrew Tate to find out if she's telling the truth or not. Because YouTube demonetized my last Andrew Tate video, I want to be very clear before we dive in. I know that multiple women have accused Andrew Tate of assaulting them. I'll only talk about one of them in this video. So when I say whether I think Andrew Tate is guilty or not, at the end of the video, that only applies to this one accuser. And it's only my opinion, I'm just one guy. So if I say that I think she's lying, that doesn't mean that the other accusers are also lying. If I say I think she's telling the truth, that does not mean the other accusers users are also telling the truth. I hope that's clear. Without further ado, let's listen. Andrew maintains that he has never abused a woman. But when we get back from Romania, we finally manage to speak to some women from his past. Amelia began seeing Andrew in 2013. Due to fear of harassment from his fans, she is withholding her real name. I always knew, even from back in the day, there was always things said bad about him. But when I'd seen him again in 2013, I thought, oh, all these rumours about him are going to be false because he's actually been really lovely. The first time I went around his house, because before it was a, like maybe three, four times we, we got on dates, we started to make out on the bed. Out of the blue, he literally just stopped what he was doing and just laid back. He said, I'm just contemplating whether I should f you or not. And I promise you, within an instant, he changed. He just jumped straight on top of me, grabbed my throat, started suffocating me, strangling me. Studies have shown that liars often use persuasive phrases. For example, phrases like, I promise, I swear, honest to God, truthfully, etc. Liars do this because they know the truth is not on their side. So they compensate for it by trying to be persuasive. And it's not always deliberate. Often they do it subconsciously because they know they're about to lie. Amelia said, I promise you, within an instant, he changed. I promise you is a persuasive phrase. And here it seems seems to have no purpose. That is, if the vice reporter had questioned Amelia's story and then she had said, I promise you, he changed in an instant, that would have made sense. It would be an appropriate use of a persuasive phrase. But Amelia said it on her own, so I think she is making up or at least exaggerating this part of the story. So why would Amelia lie and say Andrew changed in an instant when he didn't? Why exaggerate that seemingly unimportant detail? I think it's because the choking escalated gradually gradually, which makes things more complicated. For example, if Andrew slowly tightened the choke because he thought he was being kinky and Amelia didn't say anything, it's not as clear cut as if he had snapped and attacked her like a pit bull. <laughs> I think this is also why Amelia said Andrew started suffocating her instead of just saying he did. The action was ongoing, incomplete. But don't get me wrong, I think Andrew choked Amelia. I just don't think it happened as violently as Amelia wants us to believe. I also think Amelia didn't consent to it, but I don't know if Andrew knew that or not. As I said, it's complicated. If this happened gradually, it's not as clear cut as if he had just snapped. As you may remember from my last Andrew Tate video, Andrew and his partner are known to have liked rough so this is very murky let's keep listening and we'll get a clearer idea of what happened the more i didn't want to it made him so much more aggressive to the point where he was pinning me down hurting me the things he was saying to me he was like who do you belong to who do you belong to and the more i couldn't say it the more he'd hurt me so i couldn't see an escape and i at that point i just gave up i just gave up And then when it stopped, he went to the bathroom and acted as if it was normal. So I'm like, maybe I did what, did I want it? Did I not? People don't lie as much as you might expect, as I've said many, many times in my videos. Most people find it very stressful, especially in high stakes situations like a Vice TV interview. Even psychopaths try not to lie as much as they can because they know they could get caught. So most of the time, if someone wants to trick you, they'll just leave stuff out. For example, they might use vague language to imply that something happened without actually saying it happened. We saw some great examples of this in my Meghan Markle video. Here, Amelia went into great detail about how Andrew jumped on her and grabbed her throat. However, when it came time to talk about the alleged 
her story got very vague. In fact, she never said anything at all about it. She went from saying that Andrew Tate pinned her down to saying when it stopped, he went to the bathroom and acted as if it were normal. Amelia wants us to believe that it is but she never said that herself. It could mean the strangling just as easily. Some of you might think this is a big leap, but it's statement analysis 101. We're not hearing what isn't said. We're not trying to read hidden meanings into Amelia's words. We're simply pointing out what Amelia has put into words. And so far, she has not said Andrew Tate. So we'll take her at her word. Let's keep listening because she may still say that he did. And if she does that, our analysis will change. I definitely said to him, please don't, please don't. And he told me, shut the up. Definitely got strangled. I definitely didn't want it. Did he think I wanted it? When you look back, the psychological warfare you have with yourself is like you couldn't even imagine. You wouldn't know, you wouldn't understand it unless you've been through it. You can't even say the damn words. Have you since come to terms with the notion that that may not have been consensual, that that may have been... I know for a fact it wasn't consensual. But it's hard to use the, the word. Even though I know technically it's true, that did happen, it, it, that is what happened to me, I still don't like vocalizing it. As I've already said, the most common way people lie is by leaving something out. You'd be surprised at how rarely people tell lies of commission, which is to say that they made something up that did not happen. Since just leaving things out is a lot easier and less stressful, that's what happens 99% of the time. So that is why I am worried when Amelia cannot say that Andrew Tate does it mean it didn't happen? No, but it is a major red flag. To illustrate my point about lies of commission, notice that I've taken everything Amelia has said directly as true. She said that Andrew Tate choked her without her consent, and I believe her. Although, just like Amelia, I'm not sure what Andrew Tate was thinking. Did he think he had consent and was mistaken, or did he not? When I press play again, you'll hear Andrew Tate himself providing more evidence to back up my hunch that he strangled Amelia but did not so listen closely. Amelia's method of coping with the alleged was to pretend to herself that it was a normal relationship. The abuse wasn't consensual because he knew I didn't want it, which she confirms in multiple voice messages and texts to me. Am I a bad person? Because the, the more you didn't like it, the more I enjoyed it. I loved how much you hated it. Turn me on. Are you seriously so offended I strangled you a little bit? You didn't pass out and all the women i've ever slept with not a single one has ever or complained like you are and complaining now it's too bad we don't have the entirety of these voicemail messages i'm sure they will come out in court but it's interesting that andrew only admits to strangling amelia in this clip i think that's because that is what happened is it illegal to choke someone if they don't consent to it Yes. And if Andrew Tate did that, he should be punished. No, 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 no. But in this video, we're trying to figure out if Amelia's claim that Andrew Tate is true or not. And so far, it does not seem to be. But things can change. All Amelia has to do is say Andrew Tate and we will adjust our analysis accordingly. So let's keep listening to see if that happens. As I said in the intro, YouTube has been demonetizing my videos lately. Thankfully, the legends at Atlas VPN have stepped up to sponsor this video. If you want to support my channel and protect yourself from false accusations while you're surfing the web, consider Atlas VPN. Atlas VPN is a virtual private network that sends all of your internet traffic through a secure encrypted tunnel. This keeps people from spying on you and keeps your IP address private. Men need privacy so that they can cheat on their girlfriends. You guys are getting you can also use Atlas VPN to connect to the internet from anywhere in the world. That means you can watch shows and movies you wouldn't normally be able to due to licensing restrictions. Want to see what's on Romania, Netflix, or HBO, or Prime? With Atlas VPN, now you can. Best of all, Atlas VPN has a huge sale going on right now. You can get a three-year subscription for $139 a month, and you have 30 days to get your money back if you don't like it. That means you can get an 86% discount with zero risk. Don't forget to click on the link in the description to get 86% off Atlas VPN. Back to the video. Every few months, Andrew would send me on a different number, messages to remind me of how dangerous he was. I thought I'd remind you of the caliber of man I am. I am one of the most dangerous men on this planet. Scare tactics to, to make sure I wouldn't go anywhere. 
edge of the police wouldn't report would always be under his control. It was always to remind me that he was there. I did an internship at the public defender's office while I was in law school. I spent some of that time helping out in the domestic violence unit. And this is how abusers act. They like to keep their victims in fear. And because they are cowards, they like to use technology to do it from afar. Technology! That said, this voicemail does not sound like a threat to me. It sounds, to me, more like a boast that has been taken out of context and set to dramatic music. I could be wrong, but we'll need to wait for the trial to find out. Hopefully there, we'll be able to hear the whole message and figure out for ourselves what it is. Until then, here's my opinion. If that's Vice's best evidence that Andrew Tate threatened Amelia about going to the police, there were no voicemails of Andrew Tate threatening Amelia about going to the police. Let's Keep listening. After six months, Amelia eventually left Andrew when she says she began to fear for her own life. In 2014, she also decided to report the incident to police, who logged it. A year after, I got a phone call from a police officer from Hertfordshire Police. She said to me, we have two other girls that have come forward and said the exact same thing as you. Would you please be willing to come onto this investigation to make this case stronger? And without any hesitation, I said yes. And I thought, well, if there's two other girls, I'm not alone now. I'm not alone. As I said in the beginning of this video, my final verdict, which I'm about to give, will only apply to Amelia. It does not apply to any of the other Andrew Tate accusers. Each accuser needs to be analyzed individually. So, with that said, what testimony did Amelia actually provide? Well, she said Andrew strangled her without her permission, and she said that she cannot say Andrew Tate and I believe Amelia on both counts. I think Andrew choked her without her consent, although it's unclear whether or not Andrew thought he had consent. And by that same token, I don't think Andrew because she never said that's what happened. If you want to see my analysis of another Tate accuser, click here. Until next time, stay true.